Hello everyone, this is my sixth video on the UiPath Studio interface. We're doing an overview um, that is not too deep, but enough to give you like some insights into what exactly are all these controls on this interface. Last class, we talked about the data manager um, <clears throat> panel, and we went kind of extensively through that, so I'm not going to go any further on that. Uh, one of the main takeaways from that is that, you know, learn how to research stuff on your own. And I gave you an example of uh, namespaces. Like if you wanted to learn more about namespaces, I showed you how to go to UiPath Studio Docs to do that. So with that, I'm going to go to a very important and interesting panel called the Object Repository. Um, I say important and interesting because... You know, when you, when you build automations, there is a chance that you'll come across things that you do over and over and over again in a company. A great example would be logging into um, like a URL. Maybe it, the company has a special software or ERP that they use to run their business, right? Uh, this is an example I'm about to open for you. <clears throat> this is the cloud interface for... Um, a healthcare organization so i would have to log in with my username right and my password whatever it is and then when i log in i'll see the database of activity and you know we can conduct company transactions through that chances are that i have to do this multiple times a day because i cannot stay logged in all day right so this is a great example of something that not just me but everyone in the organization has to do multiple times a day every day all year uh, and so those kinds of activities you know they're good candidates for what we're about to discuss because you want something that you as an automation developer can just build for example i can teach it how to log in with my login i'm not going to do that because this is this is not a test case i can't be using like a live database to show you confidential information i'm going to use something else but as an illustration, I can teach it how to log into this database or ERP or company software so that I won't have to do it ever again. I just, you know, kind of trigger it automatically and it would do it, right? Uh, because these these proprietary softwares, they don't, they don't allow you to stay logged in for security reasons, right? They don't want other people using your account when you're not there. So they might kick you out every, say, 30 minutes. Um, so it's a good application of what I'm <clears throat> trying to discuss in this class. To to make the illustration, I'm going to use something that everyone has on their um, computers, the calculator app application, right? Uh, so I'm sorry, I cannot use that software because again, uh, if I log into that software, you're going to see confidential information that I'm not at liberty to disclose, you know. Uh, so we're going to have to use something more neutral. The other reason is that if I even use that software to show you an example, you don't have access to that software, so it won't be a good um, practice case for you. So for that reason, we're going to use the calculator application, which everyone has on their on their computers. So what you want to do with the object repository is that since you are using this application over and over and over again, you just want to create like something that if anybody else wants to use the application, um, they can use it. They can use the automation to do whatever they want to do. So an example is maybe every day, our example today will be every day somebody has to do some calculations, maybe add one plus two plus three, for example. I know it's oversimplified, but it's for you to get a visual on this. Maybe add one plus two plus three on the calculator or any number, any, any combination of numbers, whatever, on this calculator. People use it all the time. So instead of me... Um, doing it manually i want to create an automation that does that but the thing about automation is that it doesn't make sense to create automations for one-time use cases like just to add one plus five right that doesn't make sense but i can create an automation that anybody who wants to add any number can use it anywhere and then that will make sense the whole idea of having an automation for that purpose will make sense because it's reusable by others right so what you do is that you you sort of create like for lack of a better word, um, an object repository, 
right so you teach it this calculator screen this is what it looks like this is what the seven key is this is what the eight key is this is what the nine key you teach it all of that and then you now can share that with other people so nobody else has to bother to build this and you can use it organization wide you can even share it with all the users of UiPath across the globe you know if 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 you so desire but we're going to do a very simple use case uh, so that you catch a drift of what I'm saying so you can see where my image is I'm going to move my video is I'm going to move it over to the right side and you, as you notice I've opened the object repository uh, panel here so if you look here there's like a record see where it says capture elements right there's that button there and that's how you use this functionality now what are the other icons beside it this is to expand everything this is to collapse all this is to refresh this is to add something but the one we need is capture elements so if i click that it's basically going to say what's up what what are we what are we it's like a recorder it's like what's up what are we trying to do here so you you click the record button here let's say start recording in this dialog box and then you hover on your application so you see everything becomes green so the first thing you do is you create you click the home screen you know this can be any cal any application we're just using the uh, the calculator for our example uh, and we can just you give it a name and a description you can say calculator app and whatever name you want to call it you know i'm just going to duplicate that here All right so you continue you go back again maybe this morning i want to add seven plus five plus three right so you click on seven to identify so this is automated it's gonna identify that okay you just selected the button and the button is seven this is your target you can see it's written target there it is not a bad idea to have an anchor so i might use this an anchor is something that is close by that will always be close by just to kind of reassure the the automation i mean this selector that you are creating that this is the right target this green thing is the right target right so you, you click something near it like an anchor to that target so it knows for sure that right this button next to this button is what i'm clicking so when you do that when you click your anchor it's going to understand that the green selection is the button we are, we are after the target and this blue one is the anchor right so that's one then you go back to the dialog box and you say save and continue so what we've just done is we've taught this thing how to identify this button for seven but you know we have to name it appropriately so i might say seven here button seven mm -hmm. so that we know the difference save and continue remember i said we wanted to add seven five and three so i'll go to five click on it it's going to automatically gather the details of where that location is you don't have to figure it out back in the days of early UiPath we actually had to like tweak some of these things manually but things have improved a lot so like I said earlier next to the 5 is the 8 I could use that as an anchor I could also use 6 or 4 it doesn't matter but just choose something that's always going to be close by as an anchor so I'm going to use 4 in this case right so when it does that you you know like I did before you want to make sure that okay you give it a name so you don't get confused but it's not like you can't figure it out like if you look at this this um let me select this html you can see that the button name five is written there just in case you forget right um so but it's always a good idea to um give it a proper element name right so you don't get confused so save and continue and then the last one i want to select is three i'm going to use two as the anchor after it acquires the target and then like I said give it a name three so likewise you um, you want to do that for every button on this calculator so that anybody can use it anywhere but I'm not going to do that in the interest of time so the same way I've acquired seven five six let me do one more just to be one more number uh, let me do say nine right same thing look for something nearby like a multiplication button doesn't matter it just needs to be nearby uh, for better results and again the purpose of that is just to help the, the the automatic element capture to be certain of 
what it what it's targeting so again i've done that now we've got a couple of numbers but we have no operands like i'd like to like say maybe add right or subtract or multiply so i've got to capture those so and then I've, I've also got to say equal to i'll capture that too so i want to acquire the plus i'll use three as the anchor and i'll give it the proper identification so this is the plus button right it's a button okay i don't need to I actually don't need to so this is my but i don't need to like add anything on this this lower let me quickly change that before I confuse you. This because it's just a type. It's an element type, right? And we know it's a button, so we don't want to confuse this thing. The lower one. All right. So back to what we were doing. We just got the plus button, and I'm about to save and continue. And then I'm gonna do like the equal to button now. Again, remember that you know I, I we're supposed to do every button on this calculator, so no one will ever have to do this again ever. But in the interest of time, I will give you that to do as an assignment. I'm just going to do the seven, five, three, nine buttons, the plus button and the equal to buttons. Now I'm doing the equal to buttons, and I'm equal to button, and I'm giving it an anchor now. That's where we're, that's where we're at. And then I'm going to give it a name. This is the equal to button and then I'm going to save. So I pretty much have everything I need for this um, part of the automation. I'm going to click the save. For those who don't know, um, this used to be like a hard floppy disk back in the day. Nowadays, we don't even see those things on the market anymore, but that's where you used to save this, all this interaction you've done permanently. And what it does is that it saves objects to the all these things you've captured to a library or repository so that uh, you know it's more more of a permanent thing so I'm going to click save and we're back here and now you see under this panel object repository you see that it has calculator app and under calculator app it has like it has all these these things that we we captured right but then how do we use it um, because for a lot of you, this is still theory up to this point. So I'm going to recommend that you, because I'm trying to teach you how to nav navigate this interface, that you create a new sequence, right? So you click new, click new, click sequence. And then uh, I'll just call it object repo. And then I'll, I'll create it. So it's going to create like a new tab in the designer panel, which is what is in the middle here. And we're going to actually use what we just created. And it's an interesting um, application we're going to see here. So the way you use this is that you click on the, the actual, this thing that I opened up, that I expanded. The first one, that's when we spied the home screen of the calculator. That's where you, dra you drag it into this middle place, uh, the designer panel. And it knows that, okay, this person wants to do something with that application, this application, the calculator. But like I said, I want to, I want to add, let's say it's seven plus five plus three. So I said, so I'm going to drag seven in and then, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. So drag it in, hit it, drop it where the plus button is. And then it's going to, you get some suggestions from this drop down. What do you want to do with it? Do you want to click? Do you want to type? In this case, it's a button. So I want to click. So I click that. So it understands that I want to click the seven button so I'm going to do the same thing well wait a minute I'm going to do the same thing with the plus button because like I said I want to do seven plus five plus three so I drop that in that same drop down is going to come I'm going to say click because that's what I want to do and then so I'm going to do five it's going to ask what do I want to do I say click so plus again so I've done seven plus five I'm going to click add click click again so this is seven plus five plus three. I'm gonna drag three in here. It's gonna ask, what do I wanna do? I just wanna click. After I've added them, I wanna say equal to so that I get an answer, right? So I drag equal to here, last elements in the, right? And 
that's it for now okay and so if I press save my work is saved um, and you know just for to, just to illustrate what we've done I'm gonna right click on this box up here the entire object repo box it's like a process and I'm gonna say debug run from this activity right and the reason why I'm doing that is that uh, it's a bit let me just quickly go over that this this uh, automation always defaults to main this is main there are, there are like three different processes in this automation now main set my second automation and the one we just created my this object repo if I hit this blue button now it's always going to trigger this main but that's not what I want and that's why I'm right clicking on this because I only wanted to run this sequence we just made a few minutes ago another way to accomplish the same thing is if I right click on this object repo and say um, set as main then you see you notice it becomes highlighted right so that if, if it's if this is the main object and I hit debug this blue button here then it understands that I want to run object repo but if I do not do that and leave it as it was before it's very important you know this um, set as main where is it no oh, I should be able to do that back back to the actually to turn it back again anyway so let's not get distracted so for if for, for the sake of simplicity I'm just gonna set as I have done set this as main and then hit debug right now look at the debug screen we're gonna talk a little bit about that in our next class there are three this I'm sorry this this top screen the top of the screen here has home which takes you back here design and debug we're gonna talk a little bit about debug in the next class but what we're gonna do to round up this class is to just run what we just created uh, and to do that I just need to hit notice I, I was in design I hit debug I want to hit debug file so what it's going to do is it's going to check are there any errors as usual and then it's going to do what we asked it to do so it's quite slow but you can see it pressing it 7 plus 5 plus 3 equals 15 and then of course it stops so now to round up this video what, what you typically do from here on out is maybe you might want to publish uh, go back to design panel here by clicking that you want, want to publish this to orchestrator and then other people can use this on their computers maybe you want to use another button 8 9 10 all the buttons will be there you want to add big bigger numbers you just drag them in and set up your automation without having to do any of the spying you know capturing elements that we did in this process so i hope you get a sense of what object repository is from this video this is a great place to stop and my assignment for you would be spy the whole calculator or capture all the elements of the whole calculator not just these few that i have captured and then use them to do your own calculations you can use big numbers small numbers doesn't matter but just the idea is make sure it works and you have the whole calculator already captured so that anybody else who wants to use the calculator in your organization does not need to start doing all of that again. It just needs to apply what you've done. All right. So thank you. See you soon. Bye.